For many people, Christmas is a time of great joy, being with family and friends, creating great memories. But for others, it's a sad and difficult time, and there are many reasons for that. And joining me to talk about some helpful tips to deal with getting over grief during the Christmas season is Dr. Andrew Blackwood, a registered psychotherapist, life coach, and a good friend to 100 Huntley Street. Andrew, nice to see you back, good brother. You, Jack. Now, let's uh, talk about some practical things that we can do. Not everybody grieves the same way. That's right. And, and I think if I've gone through something and I've grieved it, maybe there's an expectation that's how somebody else should grieve. Exactly. You know, not just how you grieve, but what you grieve. Uh, Christmas time, I have a memory when I was probably six or seven, I, my godmother gave me this gizmo doll my partner in crime. He went everywhere with me. I mean, literally, I'd take his head off and put nickels <laughs> okay. in there. And one day, I lost him. And I couldn't find him. I searched and searched and searched. And it wasn't until years later when I sat and I thought back about that moment. The worst part was that nobody helped me look for him. And it, w it was actually kind of devastating for yeah. me. And why would I share a story about a toy at Christmas? Well, it highlights the fact that grief is different for everyone. Someone might think that's not a big deal, you know, and that kind of reinforces the idea that, you know what, keep your grief to yourself, people aren't gonna understand, but that's not true. And we're not the best culture overall. I mean, some people, depending on what parts of the world and how they deal with grief, because it is different, but generally Canadians are a little more not as open maybe to sharing grief. Yeah, we don't know how to. I mean, like, we don't have rituals and we don't have practices outside of a funeral or things like that. But that also gives us the opportunity to acknowledge when people experience loss or when you experience a loss, finding ways to incorporate that. So some people grieve by pulling away to themselves, and that's not necessarily unhealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, but some people, they grieve by sharing. They share the memories. They share, they share the loss. They cry. They share the pain, right? I think one of the most important things, and this is tip number two, if you're keeping track at home here, is it's not, um, the question maybe is not to ask why it happened, because that's usually what happens when we think of, okay, why did this happen, but it's what can we do? Right. Tell me why that's so important. The instinctual kind of why, why is this happening to me? Why God, why did you take this or this person from me? Um, and I found that why doesn't really move us, whereas what does. What is it that you want me to do now? Where do I go from here? Who can I talk to about this? You know, what, what am I gonna take away from this experience? Those kinds of questions create movement for people. Because grief is differently experienced by everybody else, I think one of the key has to be point number three here now is to be patient with yourself, right? As you're going through the grief process, just because somebody went through it, maybe it looked like quicker. Right. You have to be patient, right? It, 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 really, it really ties into the first point because grief is going to be different for different people. Some people, this is year two, this is year three, this is year four, this is year five of losing a loved one. And around this time, that pain gets opened up again. So it's important to be patient with yourself and to allow yourself to go through the process, as well as be patient with other people because some people really don't know what to say. They might open their mouths and the worst things come out. It's important to know that not many people know how to deal with it well. Oh, and in some cases, it would be to seek a professional like yourself, right? It's definitely helpful to have either formal or informal support so that you can be heard, you can be listened to, you can learn the process of identifying what it is that you need at this point in this time. Because if you get the wrong advice, that can be devastating. It really can. Right. Family support, how, how important is that? I think it's very important. The reality that most of us live in the context of family, especially for people who have lost family or who actually have no family left, that could be terrible. So, you know, we have the family that we're born with, but we have the family that we choose. We try to find the people that can support us and that can walk with us. And if you do have family that you're born with, it's important to remember who those family members are. Some of them are going to intuitively know what it is to say, and some of them are not going to. So once again, identifying what it is that you need and being 
brave enough to ask for that. And we just have a few seconds, but we also have to remember that you, if somebody in the family has passed away, you're not the only one that's going through the grief. That's right. You're not the only one who's lost someone. And that loss is going to most likely be different and felt differently for people. So they will express it differently. But sometimes we can come together and just talk about what that means and then come up with a common way that we can commemorate this person and reintegrate their memory and the meaning. Some people, it's a particular dinner. For some people, they will will leave that seat for that person, they will set that plate, or they'll have an ornament, or they will say a prayer, or they'll give a donation on behalf of that person. Okay, thank you, Andrew. I wish we had more time, but uh, you gave us some great tips here. Always appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you're going through that difficult time, just always remember our prayer lines are open. Somebody that will pray with you and to, you know, give you good counsel. Anyway, let's head over to our Bible teacher, Robbie Simons.